can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Just go with me a second here. Have you ever been in love? I know, it's sort of a corny question. Uh, statistically, the answer is yes. Statistically, you have at some point in your life. Whether you are 13 or 89, whether you have some sort of passionate uh, love affair, whether you're married or just have a crush that you see every day on the street, or whether you just love your grandma or your parents, or you finally uh, said, you know what, my little sister's not that bad, I care about her. You have at some point felt affection for another person in your life. Now, this is not Matt and I's usual thing. That's Matt behind the camera. I'm Ben. This is stuff they don't want you to know. Uh, but we, at, uh, after several listeners told us uh, that we needed to do Deceptive Brain, again, we needed to pick it up, uh, we found some really exciting stuff, and some of it was about, uh, some of it concerned, rather, human emotions, like love. Uh, so this Friday, we have an episode on love coming out on our original series. This, um, understand if people would say, hey, this is kind of weird, why are you guys doing that? Here's why, because love does some frightening and amazing things to the human brain. I mean, vasopressin, oxytocin, uh, the, the, the dopamine alone um, makes measurable impacts on the way that a person in love will perceive the world. It's, it's crazy, and I, I just wanted to put in a few things that we, we might not uh, have in the episode when it airs. Um, we always walk away thinking there's something else we wanted to say. So um, one thing that's really cool is that athletes uh, who feel that they are in compassionate love with someone, now that would, in, in contrast to passionate or amorous love, that would be you know the affection you have for a close friend or for a family member. People in that sort of situation, uh, athletes feel that their performances are enhanced. And we do know that the experience of being in love increases the flow of blood to the brain areas associated with motivation. We also know that love goes back to uh, some of the older brain structures, even down to uh, the amygdala, to um, the what you'll sometimes hear called the reptilian brain, and I do not mean that in a David Icke way, uh, but rather the uh, one of the earliest brain structures, evolutionarily speaking. Um, there's a dark side to some of this too. So for a long time, oxytocin, which was uh, was considered, people even called it the love hormone because of the way that it affected people's brains. You know, you would see somebody on the street or the, it, whatever, you get a Valentine's Day card, I don't know, and then your eyes dilate to the size of nickels and your heart is beating all crazy and then the dopamine, the oxytocin rushing through your brain and then you feel trust and you're bonding with people. Um, <clears throat> turns out there's a dark side to oxytocin as well. It doesn't just amplify those feelings. It amplifies other uh, social or interpersonal feelings such as jealousy, um, envy, and our favorite, suspicion. There's a, There are a few interesting studies that show for people who are not currently in some sort of relationship or, or feeling that um, the chemical release that would occur when they're in an interpersonal compassionate and passionate affection relationship, uh, listening to music can also release uh, dopamine. It can be a pleasure inducing activity. Um, there are some other activities that can release some of these chemicals and we will check them out in our episode coming out this Friday. So thank you so much for watching. As always, we've been getting a lot of wonderful listener suggestions um, via Facebook primarily, but we've been getting some suggestions via Twitter as well. Uh, we look forward to all of them and uh, we are trying to make sure that we write everybody back. Uh, we're not getting to everything as quickly as we would like, but of course, we want to do this for a very long time. So as always, we're grateful. Let us know what you think of our upcoming episode on the deceptive brain, love, 
and uh, tell us about it on Facebook. Uh, drop us a line at Conspiracy Stuff on Twitter, or just send us an old-fashioned email at conspiracy@discovery.com.